Hey Fox, welcome back to yet another episode of the operating platform features. In this video, I intend to demonstrate to you the procedure to recover a root pole failure. Most of us are aware that Solaris 11 operating platform mandates the usage of ZFS as the root file system. In Solaris 10, from a specific release onwards, you could have your root file system as ZFS. Now, if ZFS as a root file system offers us a number of convenience, one of the conveniences come in the form of the snapshot you could take of the root file system. Using the ZFS snapshot command, you could take the snapshot of a root pool, save that snap a snapshot in some central location like a NAS server or a NFS server, and then use that snapshot later to recover from a root pool failure or even to build a system for that matter. So in this short demonstration, I'm going to walk you through the steps that are involved in creating the snapshot of a root pool, storing the snapshot in a central location like an NFS server, and then later build a machine using the snapshot that we've created. So we'll break this demonstration into two phases. In the phase one, I'm going to use the ZFS commands to take the snapshot of my root pool and keep that snapshot into a shared file system, an NFS location. And then in the phase two of the demonstration, we will go to a client, which is an empty client, meaning there is no operating system installed on the hard disk of that client. We will boot the client using the CD-ROM and then uh, uh, drop to the shell of that client and then access the shared file system where the snapshot is residing and use that snapshot to build that system. By and large, the procedure remains the same even if you are attempting to recover a root pool failure. So without any further delay, let me first run the command zfs create recursively. I want to create a snapshot of my root pool. I'll call this as snap.1 maybe. Uh, a little rusty with the commands there. It's actually snapshot because zfs create is the command that we use to create a file system. Looks like the command ran successfully. We can verify that by running the command zfs list minus t snapshot to verify if the snapshot was created fine. Since we used a minus r switch with the zfs snapshot command, it has taken the snapshot of the child file systems uh, in the r pool. As you can see, there are a number of child file systems in the output there. A couple of child file systems, one that is swap and the other one dump, is not required as a part of the snapshot. We will need to recreate these file systems on the client side uh, during the process of bringing up the client or building the client. So for now, it is safe to destroy these child file systems from the snapshot that we have created. So in the next couple of commands, we are going to destroy one, the rpool uh, slash swap from snap.1. And we will also destroy rpool slash dump at snap.1. Of course, you will have to remember to recreate this during the process of building the client. But in the snapshot, it's not really required. So we're going to destroy this snapshot here. Now that we have the recursive snapshot created of the root pool of this machine, the next step is to keep this root pool snapshot in a shared location. I do have a number of directories of this machine shared. One of the directories that I've shared is slash shares. What I'll do next is to send this snapshot into that shared location so that we would be in a position to access this location when we build the client. So let me run the command zfs send, of course, recursively. What do I want to send? rpool snap.1, rpool at snap.1. Maybe I'll put that or probably redirect that to a gzip command uh, to the directory slash shares slash, we will call this as uh, fedg.snap.gz. So all I'm doing here is to send the snapshot of my root pool uh, onto a directory called slash shares and I'm giving it a name fedg.snap.gz. Uh, I have told you earlier that slash shares is a shared, shared file system. So I would be able to access this directory from my client when I boot the client from the CD-ROM. So let's go ahead with this command. 
A couple of warnings that popped uh, in the beginning of this book was that uh, there is no uh, snapshot exist for dump and swap. Uh, you would remember we destroyed it, but we would need to recreate it when we when we build the client. Uh, this process is going to take some time, and I don't think we need to waste any time watching the terminal and waiting for the messages to pop up. So what I'll do is I'll pause this video at least until the time this snapshot is saved into the shared folder, and we'll come back. Uh, when this process is completed so that next we can boot the client to use the snapshot to rebuild the system. So let me pause this until this command is finished. As you can see the process went through quite fine and now I have fedg.snap.gz which is actually the snapshot in a gzip format kept under the uh, shares directory. Uh, this is a directory that is shared so I could access this directory from my client when I build the client. Maybe we might also want to have a look at the IP address of this machine. Uh, we would be accessing this machine using the IP address 192.168.10.100. Now let's go to the client now that we have the uh, snapshot ready with us.